Well, good morning once again, family. Glad you could join us this morning. So we can turn this one up a little bit. Now you can probably hear me at home, back there in the back, or wherever you are joining us today. Uh, if you weren't able to join us in person, hopefully you're still able to get online and watch and listen to some worship as well, because corporate worship is powerful and encouraging. It's great to be together in the Father's house. And so I want to share a few passages with you and a word from our open Bible district and so forth. If you uh, are here this morning to receive a bulletin, just some updates for those of you that will be watching later online, for those of you that are here this morning. Next Sunday uh, is our annual business meeting and review of the year. So that's happening next Sunday, the 6th. Before that, though, on the 5th, Saturday is the first Saturday of the month. The men will be gathering together for breakfast. So men at home, if you hear us now or you here today, if you can join us, this Saturday at 9 a.m. we'll have a men's breakfast from 9 to 11, some time of fellowship together. So you're welcome to join us. Also tonight, we are having our adult Bible study, the discipleship class that we've been teaching, Roger's been teaching. It'll be all on Zoom tonight, so join us via Zoom if you can. I believe we're finishing up seven and going into week eight and nearing the end of the 10-week course. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that. We'll do something similar again, repeat, because it's so important. Everybody say, so important. So important. For those of you that are watching, make sure you're listening. It's so important that we be in fellowship together and in the Word of God together. So I want to encourage you, if you're in a discipleship class or you're doing women's Bible study or men's group, make sure that you are plugged in because... We need one another, and iron sharpens iron. We encourage each other. We keep stirring one another. We definitely don't want to be out there trying to do life on our own these days, more importantly than ever, that we have one another. So keep those things in mind, starting with this Saturday. Men's breakfast, I believe Friday, though, will be women's Bible study. And then next Sunday, please remember that we will have our annual year in review. We'll have some elections happening for some new elders positions and so forth. I want to make sure you don't miss that and you have an opportunity to be a part of that. I want to read to you an update from our district, Open Bible District Superintendent. Uh, there's a lot going on around the world. I'm sure you're all hearing about what's happening, Ukraine, Russia, all around the world. I want you to be encouraged though. God is not caught by surprise by anything and he's setting the stage, dear ones. And if you are disciples of Jesus Christ, I trust you've been in the word and some of what we're seeing and hearing and even these birth pains, yes I said birth pains that we have experienced in the last 24 months like never before in my lifetime and perhaps even my grandparents lifetimes, the things that are happening are setting the stage and we should be of great joy and look for our redemption draws near. So here's a letter from Dan Lelisher, some of you have met him before, he's the Oregon District Superintendent. And here's a word that he sent out to pastors, and I wanted you all to hear it as well. So here it begins. Uh, First of all, you are in our prayers. It's a joy and privilege to serve the Lord and his church, but it, but it also can be a heavy load to bear. The very ones we serve, and this is pastor speaking to pastors, okay? It says the very ones we serve can make it difficult to follow our call. Remember who your call came from. Not from the church you serve, the education you have had, or even because of how incredibly uh, smart and godly you are. Your call is from the Lord, and the adversary would love to discourage and sidetrack you. As you walk in the Lord's love and obedience, you are fulfilling his call for your life. Thank you for not giving up or giving in. Please be in prayer for Chris Hansler. Chris Hansler was our regional superintendent, and we've been praying for him because we know that his wife, Lisa, uh, went to be with the Lord as she fought the battle of cancer and is now healed at home in the hands of Jesus. So we want to remember to pray for him. Uh, and the service for Lisa will be this Saturday the 5th uh, in Washington. So Chris needs our prayers, yes, for the service, but beyond the service, there's a heavy load for him going forward, facing his life assignment without Lisa beside him. Please pray for him every time you are prompted. We all believe that prayer makes a difference. Amen? Amen. We do. It does. It really does make a difference. So we want to continue to encourage him. If you have any questions, he's encouraging us to call back. Also asks us to please pray for Tammy Swahili's. Now, I don't know if you know who Tammy is, but she's been a missionary to Ukraine for Open Bible for years. 
and has seen incredible ministry take forth, the incredible growth of the body of Christ there in Ukraine through the ministry of Open Bible Missions. And so, of course, she had to leave. We brought her back home to the States, and her heart is grieved as she had to leave loved ones behind. It says she just received word that the airfield just a mile away from the house where she lives was bombed and believes uh, believers there were terrified with many heading to the church to gather and pray. Again, prayer makes a difference. A note on celebration, congratulations some other assignments and pastors and so forth. We are just reminded that we are part of a big family. Open Bibles all around the world and we thank God for that. that there are missionaries we support for different missionary families around the world that the gospel is still being heard. And sometimes it is, dear ones, in the most difficult times of our lives that we're reminded where our help comes from. So I want you to be encouraged in that, to stand fast and believe. We're going to pray for a few people here this morning as Pastor Jane gets ready to come and share. I want to read a passage to you that I read uh, before. It is an encouraging word to me, and I've been reading it often. It's a few highlights from uh, Isaiah chapter 40. So I just want for you to hear the word of God and to hear what the Word is saying to us. We sang an incredible song this morning about how He strengthened us. He strengthens us like the wings of eagles. So that comes from Isaiah 40. Verse 21 says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is He, God, who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. It is he who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and speaks them out like, a, or, or excuse me, spreads them out like a tent. Again, it goes on and says, Have you not known and have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint. He does not grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. For even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So he says, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So let us pray. God, thank you. We have heard your word today. We know the promises of your word that says you will strengthen us when we are weak and weary and tired. We hear the promise of your word that says you do not sleep, you do not slumber. You see all, you know all. You see what's happening around the world. We pray for those, our believers, believers, brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world that perhaps even now could be persecuted for saying the name of Jesus. Today we say Jesus, 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 King of kings and Lord of lords, we exalt your holy name. Yes. We thank you, God, that you are coming again and that you, Lord God, hold us in your right hand. We pray that blessed assurance, Lord, as we even were reminded of last week, your eyes are upon the sparrow. So much more do you care for the sparrow, or so much more for us than even the sparrow, God. Thank you that you see us and you know us. Hallelujah. For those watching at home, watching on the video later, be encouraged. Know that God sees you. He knows you right where you are. We want to pray for our dear Joseph. He'll be watching this a little bit later. Joseph, love you. Good morning to you, brother. Our prayers are with you. Our family knows where we are. He's in the river bed. He's gone through surgery. Uh, they they did have to amputate his foot. He's in, well in great spirits. He's such an encourager to me. As we sit together, they are letting pastors come in and visit now. So that's awesome. And he has four pastors. He told them, I have four pastors, and they will all probably be here to see me. You will let them in. Yes, they will let all four of us in to see him and pray with him. So be encouraged. Joe has been an encouragement to me because he's such a great spirit. He believes God has new things. I'm going to have a bionic foot, be stronger than I ever was before. No more pain in my broken bones because his ankle is all messed up for years. So God is with him and encouraging him, and we will do that. So we're going to pray for Joe. We're we'll going to pray for our families that are home today, our dear Marty and Christy and others, Alice, those who are still struggling. We all struggle with different afflictions, but the Word of God says, have you not known? Have you not heard? 
our God sees and knows all. So let's just take a moment. We pray for Joe. We pray for other family members and thank God that he sees us. Remember what we read last week, his eyes upon the spirit. He knows us so much that he even knows the number of hairs upon our head. He knows everything about what you're going through today. He knows yesterday it's done. We might know some of it. He knows today and he knows tomorrow and he has a plan. So let us pray. Not in fear, but in thanksgiving, we pray. God, thank you that you see us, you know us. Thank you for the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for the miracle working power of medicine and the things that you use here and around the world. So thank you for the quick, complete recovery for our brother Joseph. Thank you for the quick, re complete recovery of all those who would be suffering and afflicted today. God, touch our family afar. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence right now here in this room with us. Your word says, God, when we gather together in your name, you are right here in our midst. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for that. Lord, we do pray for the churches all around the world, specifically right now. We pray for the body of Christ, the open Bible missionaries and church plants, Lord God, in Ukraine. We ask God as they are gathering together in prayer that they would know that the body of Christ around the world is praying for your kingdom to come and your will to be done. God, we know you're setting the stage for the most incredible revival, the most incredible return the world has ever seen. And we get to be a part of that, God. Thank you for allowing us to be born now for such a time as this. That we could witness the glory and the power of God around the world. We sing, even so come. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged, church. Be encouraged all around the world. Jane, Reese is going to share the word of God with us. Be encouraged. Open your ears to hear. Your eyes to see what God is doing all around us. Amen. Amen. For I am with you. 
The greatest force in the universe is with us. You know, um, I was thinking about what it is that God wanted me to say this morning. And first and foremost, we have the DNA of Almighty God. You would not be here if you were not born, right? Mm -hmm. We have the DNA of Almighty God in us. Nonetheless, there are a lot of things <coughs> that come our way. It's not too often that you hear a sermon based in Lamentations. But as I was reading it, I realized that in the verses, remember scripture, context? Mm -hmm. In the verses before Lamentations 3, 21 through 23, the author is talking about all of the trauma that he went through and how down he was. I like what the living message said when he hit the bottom of the barrel. But the very next verse is this. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. What does he have? Oh. Hope. Oh. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions, meaning his love and mercy, never fail. His love and mercy are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. And as I was getting ready to talk to you for a few moments, I realized that this last week, I've been dealing with a little bit of depression, I would say. Just an underlying little, little feeling. You ever had that sometimes that's there? Mm -hmm. I had gone to a memorial service where someone that we had prayed for for so long went to be with Jesus, and I know that he's having a great party up there, but we had prayed so hard, and all the people had. Gary and I had to be tested for COVID again because we'd been exposed, and there was that stupid COVID irritating and getting in the way of my plans again. We had modern nations in the <coughs> modern world suddenly attacking another nation, like things that happened when I was 20 years old, and it's come back to do it again with the same kind of fears and things that we heard again. And the prayers that we have for loved ones in the body of the church that had gone to be with Jesus. And I said, Lord, what, what am I thinking here? And I thought of our Joseph, and I thought of a verse for Joe. And God brought this to mind. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. No matter what's swirling around us, who's in the center? God is in the center. And as we know in the hurricanes, there's a mighty, mighty force of uh, problems coming this way, and there's a mighty wind blowing and crushing things this way, but in the very middle, there's that peace. And therefore, I have hope because I can sit in that peace as all swirls around me. And this is the truth that God brought to mind to me. God is a good, good father all the time and wants good things for us. That doesn't mean that our life is going to be perfect because he tells us our life is not going to be perfect. Because remember, this is like an army training ground. Mm -hmm. This world that we live in, when I thought to myself, I get up, I do something during the day, I'm tired, I go to sleep, I get up, that day's gone. Mm -hmm. Don't have the one that's coming, I only have the minute that I have right this minute. That's it. And you know, it seems like only yesterday that I was 20. And I'm not 20 anymore. <laughs> but the thing of it is, 
is every day we wake up and start all over again. And what does God say to us? That his love and his mercy is new every morning. Every day is a new day. Even when horrible things have happened the day before, we go to bed, we might not sleep all night, but we sleep some, mm -hmm. and we get up, and it's a new morning. And what does God say? He says his love and his mercy is new every morning. Yes, God says he is a good, good father all the time. Mm -hmm. Not just when things are going smoothly, because we know God's nature is one of generosity and blessing. In fact, he tells us in Psalms 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Oh, what? Remember what we just said? God's word never lies. And what did he just say? Many are the afflictions of the righteous? Wait a minute. I thought when I got to be a Christian that everything was going to be perfect. There weren't going to be any more problems. Uh, no. It does not work that way. In fact, for some of God's greatest warriors, some of the greatest afflictions happened to them after they became a Christian. Psalms 34, 17. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Proverbs 12, 13. What is this promise? But the righteous will come through trouble. Amen. Okay. So, God has given us his promises in a Bible that never lies. The righteous person is delivered from trouble. But you know what? That deliverance that we get from that trouble is not always the way that we expected it to be. I am a great fan of Marvel. I am a great fan of DC Comics. I am a great fan of Go Star Wars. And in the end, no matter the problem, the good guys win. Well, except that one Marvel movie where they all disappeared. But other than that, the good guys win, right? But you know, God's evaluation of how we win is not always the way that we think it might be. Here is the truth that we know. There is always a solution to any of my problems that's rooted in scripture. There's always a solution. Even though it may not be the solution that I think it is, there is always a, a something there. And we know that God might say yes to our prayers. If he says no to our prayers, it's not because he's being mean. It's because he has a different solution. And what does the Bible tell us about God and the mind of God? that we can't comprehend how he thinks. No. Plus the fact that we certainly do not see the whole picture of creation, do we? <laughs> we only see one little, well, maybe even just one little stitch <clears throat> in the whole tapestry of creation. But God knows how it all fits together. And sometimes he'll say, I want to do something different. And then there's that other solution that he has that's always a tough one, wait. We know the truth because the Bible tells us that God is bigger than any situation. Amen. We know these truths. God loves me. Point to yourself. God loves me. Jesus <coughs> loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones do. Another truth. 
God always answers. He's not ignoring you. He didn't go in on vacation into an alternate universe. He always answers you. Yeah. But remember, it may be yes, no, I want something different, or wait. All that happens to me is my opportunity to see how big God is. When God moves for us, and we didn't expect it, and we didn't expect him to do what we thought he was going to do. We know how big our God is. When God moves and takes someone home to be with him in heaven, that's still seeing how big our God is. There's a verse in the Bible that says, the righteous perish and no one ponders that it's for their own good. It's in Isaiah. Um, I have often read that to myself and I wish that I would put it in here for this because it's, it's interesting. I had to stop and think about it. What? The righteous perishes and no one ponders their passing? God is constantly preparing me for something bigger all through my life. You don't come to a spot and never stop growing. If God had nothing else for you to learn or nothing else for you to do, he'd take you home to have a party with him. Every day that you wake up is a new opportunity for God to teach you something or to do something new in your life. Every single day. I do need to apply God's word in my life consistently. That means I need to be reading the Word. I need to be reading it in context. I need to be testing what I'm reading. I do need to believe that God is bigger than Satan. You know what? If there's no solution to what we're feeling and the problem that we have, then somebody must be bigger than our God. And we know that that's not true. We know that Satan is not bigger than our God. And so when we look around the earth right now and we see the things that are happening, instead of saying, oh no, Satan is really on the move, what we need to say is hallelujah. God has gone before us in Daniel, in Ezekiel, in Revelation. He has told us what to expect and how to be prepared Hallelujah. Satan, your time is coming where you will be no more. God always answers. I want you to get that truth. And here's the one we talked about. God loves me. If you get nothing else out of what I say today, if you get those two truths, God always answers something. God loves me. So how does God deliver us out of our troubles? I read you those scriptures. He said that the righteous will come through trouble. Well, there's a way. First of all, we expect God to move and we expect good things. And you know, sometimes we have to look because what's God's good may not be what we think it is and it may look different. So sometimes we have to look and say, well, it wasn't what I wanted, but there's some good coming there. So I'm going to suggest four ways that God often brings you through your troubles. How does he move? The trouble is taken away. Our attitude changes. Uh-oh. There's a hard one. We choose to take a different pathway. God shows a solution we never thought of. First one, trouble is taken away. Now, that's the way we always pray, right? Or am I the only one? Maybe not. I always, if something gets in my way and there's an issue and there's a problem, I'm going, now God, if you would just do this and get rid of it or take that person out of my life or, how about this? God, why don't you change that person? That person is really irritating me. How about changing them? 
So our prayer is, take the trouble away. And sometimes God does. Sometimes he moves in an amazing way. I remember when Gary and I were getting, um, working on getting out of debt on things that we were doing, and we saw no way as we had got fairly deeply in debt with redoing our house when his mom moved in with us and doing it in handicap and the things. And totally, unexpectedly, out of nowhere, we got a letter inviting us to refinance our house, which nobody ever did a manufactured home in those days, and taking care of all of that. When I first got it, I said, I don't think that's a real thing. And he said, why did you just, why did you just find out? Why don't you just give him a call? Nah, that can't be. That's one of those scams. Yeah. But you know, God moved and he moved in that way. And I've seen him do that so many, many ways. And I believe that testimony is so important. And so I just have to thank God for the fact that, that four different types of cancer have attacked my body at different times. And each time, God has gone before me and he has sent those amazing little white blood cells and those amazing little T cells that he puts in our body to get it in its first stage. And I'm still standing before you. Oh, amen. You, and I believe the testimony is a spirit. Thank you, Jesus. You know, someday I will go home to be with Jesus. But we're all going to have the biggest party that we ever, ever had up there for eternity. Okay, so what if he doesn't take away the trouble? Maybe our attitude changes. That's an important way that he brings us through it. We can have this kind of attitude. Why is it happening to me? Nothing good ever happens to me. It's always me. Or, oh God, I am so upset that this has happened to me. Are you not listening to me? This is bad. Or else we can go over here with this guy with his thumbs up. How does our attitude change? We learn to rest in God. That means learning to trust and to wait. I had a word given to me at one of the conferences I went to, and they said, it's your time to rest in God. And I was so upset and so mad about the whole thing because I'm the kind of person that wants to do things. And I was highly offended that someone would give me a word that God wanted me to take a time of rest in Him. Because I didn't want to do that. I do things. And it's taken me a few years to honestly get into my heart that resting in God means trusting in Him and stepping back and not trying to change things yourself, but looking for God to take you through the problem. Rest is not inaction. Rest is actively placing your trust that the living God knows your name, knows what's going on in your life, and will bring you through it according to his plan. And what's very, very important when we're resting in God is to grab hold of scriptures. Find those scriptures, memorize them, say them over and over several times a day because our mind goes everywhere. You talk about herding cats. Every bad thought that could be out there or every what if I can come up with. And you have to pull it back in. And you have to remember those scriptures. Be anxious for nothing. Why? Because our God knows your name. Find those scriptures, hang on to them. Or we can choose a different pathway. If we have a problem in our lives and it's because of the choices that we've made, if it's not because we just live in a fallen world, things happen here, do they not? Mm -hmm. Things that we did not expect. Life and death that we have no control over. Many things in a fallen world but if it's our choices that have placed us in a problem. If we look and we say, well, you know, I know that I probably shouldn't 
let's just have an easy one. I know I probably shouldn't have that third cookie with all that icing on top of it. But you know what? I'm really feeling like I want to today. Now I know as soon as I eat them, I mean the minute I eat them, I'm going to feel bad because I'm going to say, well, yeah, there was a lot of calories in that. And besides, I'm not going to feel too well. But I'm going to eat it anyway. That was my choice. Okay? So then we have to take a look and we have to choose that different path. Sometimes we feel like this little girl, like there's so many things coming at us in all directions, and which should we choose? What should we do? In today's world, for the young people, I feel so sorry. There's so many things attacking in our schools, the drugs that are out there, the, the things that you can get uh, hooked into without even realizing it just because friends are doing it and it's cool to do that. And we think that we're going to choose that path and then we become lost or confused or unclear, perplexed, disoriented, bewildered because we know that we've taken choices that were the wrong choices and we're going down the wrong road. Then we have to change. That's our problem. We have to choose a different path, even if it's not the easy path. I would not want to be in middle school or high school these days. When I think of the pressures, when I think of the things that the students have to face these days, in our day, the teachers were concerned that students were putting chewing gum under their desks. That was the thing that we were worried about. Not the kind of things that are being dealt with in schools today. And if we choose one of these paths that gets us per confused, perplexed, or like the internet that is telling so many of our kids that taking their own life is a good thing. What? Why are we not telling our children that, yes, you may feel down today, but you know what? Within an hour, within a day, those feelings are going to change. And suddenly, we're going to be excited about the life that we have for us. We have to take an action. Change takes action. We have to choose a different path. <coughs> we have to choose that when TikTok tells us something that we shouldn't be hearing, that's not for our health, that we find something else that speaks God's word, or speaks truth, or speaks our value into ourselves. Our value. And I'd also like us to remember that people on the street, the homeless, the drug addicts, the Lord God made those souls as well. And they need help from someone who knows the living God to change and take a different path. And then there's the one that I see so often. God shows a solution we never thought of. How often does God do that? that we think we tell God exactly what we need to get through the situation. And God says, yes, how smart you are. That was a really great suggestion you gave me. How about this instead? And God takes us a different <coughs> way and through it. He does bring it through it. Not the way I thought, but different. I gave this to you once before, and I thought it was important to give it to you again. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when we might have won if we'd stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with just one more blow. 
Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you mustn't quit. Don't you quit. And that's what the Word of God is telling His people. Don't you quit. Because who is with you? Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. And I just wanted to tell you what God gave us, that He wants us to be ready, that we will not quit when those things come our way. Some of you are dealing with so many heavy things right now, such great challenges, and he doesn't want you to quit. But he equipped you so that you would not quit. What did he give us? He told us that we are to put on the full armor of God. The belt of truth. That belt is where Roman soldiers stored their weapons. Without that belt, they wouldn't carry a weapon. Paul associated the belt with truth. God's word is truth, and it serves as our foundation. And he told you right there in Ephesians 6, put on the belt of truth every day. No soldier is going to go into battle without a belt with his weapons. He said, put it on every day. The second piece that he said was the breastplate of righteousness. For a Roman soldier, that breastplate protected the lungs, the heart, all the organs necessary for life. To be righteous means to obey God's commands and live in a way that is honorable to him to the best of your ability. And don't put yourself down when you fail because you're going to fall, right? Yeah. And there are times that you're not going to do things, but do it to the best of your ability. Psalms 106 says, How blessed are those who keep justice, who practice righteousness at all times. They say feet shod, but whoever uses the word shod, right? Feet covered with the gospel of peace. Why did Paul put that in there? Can you think about going into battle without any shoes on? That would be pretty much... Ryland was telling me about when they're practicing soccer and someone makes a misstep and steps on your foot. That can really hurt. Can you imagine in battle as well? Roman soldiers had a special shoe that had spikes on the bottom of it. The shoe was comfortable and breathable, but there were spikes. And that spike would help them stand their ground so that they would stay locked where they were in battle. It also was pretty effective for stomping on other people's feet. <laughs> what Paul meant with the gospel of peace was the good news. That good news of peace. Why do we have peace? We know that we carry the fact that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit in here, and we have eternity with God. No matter what the enemy throws our way, we know that God has everything under control. And so our feet are shod with that peace that we have the Lord Jesus Christ, because we have invited him into our life. And we have that. And we can plant our feet and stand firm when things come against us. The shield of faith, actively trusting in the living God and his word. Living by faith in the promises of God shows us how we can walk in what he tells us to do. Of course, the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. Remember that it protected the head. The Arabic version of the phrase, 
means helmet of the Savior. We put on Christ himself. He protects our heads and therefore our whole being from spiritual death. The helmet of salvation, knowing that we have given our life to the Lord Jesus Christ, protects us spiritually from the powerful blows of doubt that might come from the enemy. And of course, the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. The sword of the Spirit could be an offensive weapon or a defensive weapon. And we need to remember to always take Scripture as a whole, not out of context, because Scripture interprets Scripture. Mm -hmm. An idea important to early Christians was the clarity of Scripture. What they said was, people don't need any special training or knowledge to understand the concept of sin, grace, forgiveness, and salvation. They are about as clear as you're going to get it in the Bible. There are things in here we don't always understand, but we do understand those. Remember that the sword of spirit is your offensive weapon and your defensive weapon. Philippians 4, 6 through 8, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so I wanted to bring this back to the truth that I started with. God is a good, good father all the time and wants good things for us. Truth. God is a good, good father all the time. Not just when things are easy or going smoothly. God's nature is one of generosity and blessing. And Lamentations 3, 21, 23. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. According to still faith, who counts verses in the King James Version of the Bible. Can't imagine doing that, but they do. At least 165 Bible verses talk about God's love, and 172 verses talk about hope. And so I want to leave you with this. God wants us to trust him and learn to have peace in all of our circumstances. He will bring us through those circumstances, one way or another, if we look for that. Because it may not be the way that we think it's going to be, but he's there. He didn't go anywhere. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion, that means his love and mercy, never fail. They, his love and mercy, are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lord God, thank you for being our Father. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. Father, thank you that you are faithful. Thank you, Father, that we can stand firm, that we know you're with the, the Christians in Ukraine. Yes, Lord. We know, Father, that you're standing with Chris and with Delphia and with Del and with those who have loved ones who are with you in heaven. We know, Father, that they still have something to do for you. But we also know that you weren't taken by surprise. And we know, Father, that if someone is 
home with you. That's because they finished the assignment that you had for them. And they are rejoicing with you in heaven. Father God, help us to put our minds into your hands, Father. Let us have peace. Let us have trust. Let us remember to ask because we have the privilege of coming before you and that if we ask anything according to your will, your scripture says that you hear us. And you said, if we know that you hear us, we know that we have what we've asked for. Father, help us to get a hold of that idea of according to your will. And pray fervently, but also trust fervently even more. Father, you are wonderful. You are loving. And we thank you so much for your promise that said that you will bring us through the things in life that we face. Thank you. In Christ Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>